Redcon One, which is a British uh, horror sort of horror action movie, made variously under the working title Zombie Apocalypse and or Zombie City, which in many ways kind of are more explanatory of what the movie is than Redcon One. So it's directed by Chi Kon Chong, who made uh, Underground. Story is that there has been an outbreak of a virus. I mean, stop me if you've heard this one. Outbreak of a virus which has come from a, a, originally from a, broken out of a prison, and it's ravaged the southeast. There is a huge infected area southeast of the UK, which is now kind of uh, walled off, in which the infection appears to have, have, have run rife, and it's full of uh, zombies and marauders, and also a few uninfected. Uh, but amongst all the things that are terrible about the zombies, that they're you know they're fairly fast moving and they're you know and they're very de- weirdly the virus has made the fighty zombies even more fighty than before. Here's a clip. Laboratory tests, day thirty one. Upon observing behaviour in our test subjects, there are signs which indicate a developing sense of awareness. Certain specimens we have found have a higher level of adrenaline and testosterone in their system. We believe is why they have become harder to take down. So, there is a team of sort of special forces uh, agents who are sent in to the quarantine zone in order to find the scientist who they think is behind this whole thing who is still apparently alive and well in, you know, in London and perhaps may be the key to a cure. So this team of people get sent in, um, including uh, Kiri Page, played by Katarina Lee Waters, who's a WWE wrestler, and, um, you know, the kind of action-tastic troop sent in. But inevitably there is a ticking clock. They've got something, I think it's 72 hours, before the entire area is going to be wiped out, despite the fact that there are pockets of uninfected, because what they need to do is to, you know, to just completely solve the problem by just wiping out everything. And the uninfected have turned into marauding Mad Max gang. So on... Sounds like a standard weekend in Croydon. Very good. I wonder which where you were going to go for, but you went for Croydon. Uh, Yes, I, I thought of Guildford. I remember when I did... Um, I think Croydon has more comedic properties. I did the Fangoria interview about... Um, uh, what's it called? Crazy Mutant Freaks. It was, a movie, it was Crazy Mutant Freaks. And Alex Winter said... Uh, I said, oh, where did you get the inspiration for all the, you know, all the monsters? He said, I spent a weekend in Leeds. And I thought, okay. that's fine, you don't live here, you're American, you can just pick anywhere completely at random. Anyway, so... On one level, this is, you know, just another zombie flick with ideas that we have seen done before. You know, the residual memories thing that the the, the, the zombified still have residual memories of things that they did before, which is very, very Dawn of the Dead. There's the apocalyptic London, which we saw in 28 Days Later. There's the talismanic child, which is very much the, you know, the girl with all the gifts. It's also extremely overwrought. It is full of slow-mo scenes of gun-toting, knife-wielding sort of carnage that is, you know, boom, 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 ah, So it's, you know, it's, it's a movie in which subtlety is not a big playing fact. And... I, frankly, it, I thought it was over long and it could have lost a, you know, a third of its running time. It could bring you back to the Roger Corman thing about very few movies wouldn't benefit from a th- losing a third of their running time. But despite those things, the sheer scale of it, and comparing, bearing in mind it's a fairly sort of low-budget movie, is fairly impressive, not just the fact that there are, you know, clearly tanks and armoured vehicles, but when you see the crowds of extras, they're not CGI'd crowds of extras. They appear to be, you know, huge numbers of people that have been wrangled to play the zombie extras, and, you know, good for them for doing that. Then you start looking at the credits, and you find people like Martin Hunter, whose credits are on, you know, is an editor, who's on Full Metal Jacket, Liebestrand, Event Horizon, Chris Gill, 28 Days Later, 28 Weeks Later, and The Cured. Incidentally... I reviewed, sorry, apropos of nothing, I reviewed a film recently called The Cured, which I quite liked. And a lot of people got in touch and said, I'm amazed you didn't point out the similarities within the flesh, the TV show, because, you know, I know nothing about TV. And uh, so uh, just to correct that, there is clearly a comparison between In the Flesh and The Cured. Didn't point it out at the time because of my total ignorance of television, correcting well, that. Thank week you for later. the clarification, no, which just, I just, wasn't seeking. Just thought, but I just thought I should, I should bring that up. That was a, it was on BBC Three. So although it doesn't bring much that is new to the table. It does lay out the table. I mean, it's very gory. It's very violent. It's very over... There are things in it that are quite... You know, that, that, there is some dialogue that is very poorly written. There is some moments in performance that are, you know, that border... Well, not just border upon, don't flirt with, but actually sort of positively marry cliché. But in terms of a low-budget, big-expanse zombie horror movie with a bunch of 
ideas that we've seen done before. There are certain things about it that that surprised me. I mean, as I said, the epic sweep of it, is, particularly considering the resources, is more epic than you'd expect. And it is on a technical level put together, you know, in a way which is which is solid. Not remarkable, but solid.